welcome to my May update of the garden. I thought that I would start May's update by being in a different part of the garden. We're completely at the opposite end to where I usually start. This is what we call um, the little secret seating area, which is behind this um, post wall that we created. Anyway, I thought I'd start here because as you can see, all the ferns and the hostas have really started to get going now. And they just look so lovely. I particularly love this one at the back. It's absolutely enormous. Our neighbour gave it to us. And I'm really pleased with how that's doing. As you can also see, the willow uh, farch. <laughs> so it's our little willow arch that we call our willow farch. That's really started to get going now, which is lovely to see. I'm just going to now take you to this bed, which I haven't really shown you before, to mainly show you how gorgeous Luke's foxgloves are. So uh, maybe a couple of months ago, I showed you these just starting to get going, as in sending up their growth. Oh, look, there's a lovely bee it's throwing up their flower spikes. But as you can see, for example, this one here has like one, two, three, four, five spikes. This is also another type of foxglove that Luke planted into the mound. It's got this beautiful, soft lemon flower. And you can see that there's another one up there, which is kind of lovely. The grasses are really starting to get going now. And this will eventually grow nice and tall. That's where I was sat at the beginning of the video. And then you'll be sort of cocooned behind this grasses, especially when the seed heads come up. I thought I'd also show you the mound. Um, the geranium macrorhizum is flowering profusely now and the bees just absolutely love it. It's really spreading itself beautifully. Um, we also chopped back the cornice. We've got mounds of cornice, which is dogwood, and which have lovely uh, stem, brightly coloured stems in winter. We chopped these back a couple of months ago. So we've got like kind of groups of them. And we've got another group up there. They are really starting to get going now, which is lovely. Um, also more foxgloves on the mound. And the cherry tree is also put on a lot of growth. These are Hydrangea Annabelle. And um, what's really cool is that we've got this lovely uh, new growth, here's an example, lovely new growth coming from the ground. So we, we did prune this back to like its woody structure, you can see through here. Um, but uh, this year they've already been putting up lovely new growth from the base, which is really great. We're going to do some Chelsea chopping soon to the Lemon Queen. Um, because we have such a cold April, they didn't really start growing um, as they normally would. They started growing later, a bit like everything in the garden. So usually with Chelsea chop around the end of May, but um, we're going to... We're going to leave a little bit and then we're just going to cut them back by half. I also have to focus on um, a few more plants. The still bees are really getting going here. And I think the star of the show this month has to be the hostas. So they've just absolutely exploded. Um, so I just take you on a walk down. Oh, look at these lovely hostas. Really getting going. Really excited to show you that the rose is now in bloom. That's these beautiful blooms. That one's a little bit over now, actually. Um, I wonder if I can show you another one. When they open, that one's just opening. They have the most beautiful scent. Um, so that's really cool that they're opening and it's just festooned in buds ready to open, which is exciting. Quick little update on these two beds. I, I, took, a, I took a video of these in March, the March post. Um, they're really getting going now, which is lovely. Um, you can look back on the March post to see what that, all the plants are called. But I'm particularly pleased with the Persicaria, it just looks so lush. Also the beach hedging has really come on now. We have had quite a lot not survive. We've, I've counted seven that haven't actually survived. Um, we planted them as bare roots uh, last Christmas. Um, so that is a shame. However, I think once they pad themselves out, you won't even really notice. For example, there's one that hasn't survived. But um, never mind. quite a lot have done. So that's lovely. That was my bed. Luke's bed's actually already in flower 
obviously next year the following year it's going to be much more padded out once they've all grown but you can see the aqualesia here if i just zoom in on that uh can i zoom in on that nicely no that's annoying i'll go here for you it's got this lovely claret red flower and then the persicaria behind has got like a nut soft pink and then these geraniums here have got a really zingy purple color so i took a video of this bed that we planted in march a couple months ago and i said to you that the pulmonary had been totally eaten but i think thanks to my slug patrol in the evening um they've grown back now and they seem to be getting on i just love the dotting on the leaves i think it'll create a nice contrast the silver dotting with the hookah and also to say that the um uh, the more grass is sent up its seed heads and this these white seed heads i think just look beautiful um kind of hanging hovering above the bed so of course i have to give you a little update on the bed next to the bathroom um as you can see it's just continued to fill out and now it's just like a patchwork of different colors which is just lovely i'm really pleased now that the aspleniums have sent up their new growth the ferns um, i just think that that adds a lot and last but not least, I thought I'd show you the um, bin store. The thyme that we planted back in March is absolutely going for it now. And lots of it has joined up. So I'm quite confident now that by the end of the season, this will just be one living roof of green, which is so cool. Really thrilled about that.